Hello, welcome back. I've just installed the ATI 3D charger. Let's see the yeah, 3D charger from ATI. Uh, the chip reads 3D RAID 2 plus DVD. And the number is 215GT2. I think it's VB23. So there you are. That's the actual chip we're using here now. So what we've done now is everything has remained the same. Um, but we've just changed the video card to a, a 3D capable video card. Um, I think this video card. I don't know whether it's 4 megs or 8 megs. I'm really not sure. It's probably 4 megs. Probably 4 megabytes on. Uh, I'm not sure. I really am not sure. No. Don't know. Okay, what's happening now is it's basically it's detecting the uh, video card, the ATI video card. So it should detect it okay, should install it no problem. Yep, yeah, there you are. You probably notice there as well that it says ATI M64. Uh, basically, a lot of the Mach 64 cards, um, that's on the floor, a lot of the Mach 64 cards, they use the, the, they used to use the coding. Um, from the 64s uh, for a long time and it's basically very compatible with that with that coding. There is an updated driver for the ATI uh, 3D. Eventually the ATI 3D became the RAID series which this one is and eventually became the AG, AGP RAID series which was a later chipset. Some of the RAID chipsets with AGP support and um, you'll find them in the PCI bus. The ATI Video Wonder has an AGP chipset um, one of the things you should look out for, uh, if you want DVD playback, this is a little tip for you here now, okay? If you want video playback using an ATI range of video cards, and you're not sure whether it's capable of playing back DVD or not using hardware rather than software, then look out for the code number on the video card of 101. That's 101. There are two versions of the BIOS chip, one is 100 and one is 101. If it says 101, you're in luck. It'll play back DVD using hardware. If it says 100, it won't play back DVD using hardware. It'll use software rendering. And you better make sure you get a very powerful processor because um, it ain't gonna do it otherwise. Uh, hardware DVD playback was one of the first things um, that video cards were doing after 3Ds, if it were. The idea being that the video card became more of a, a GPU or a graphics processing unit than just a thing you stuck into the machine to get a few blips, dots and dashes on the screen, you know, instead of a couple of LEDs in the front of the box. <laughs> it's out there. So, what I'm saying is the video card itself uh, done a lot more, did offload a lot of tests from the, from this, from the actual CPU, which made the CPU run a lot better. Uh, and made your machine overall perform a bit better, because at the end of the day, if you have a chip dedicated to doing one task, it's a lot better than having a chip trying to, you know, inverted commas, multitask. So now what we've done is we've taken the pain out of the processor. The processor is now running um, just itself, the sound card, which is, still isn't working, and uh, the RAM. I, I, I'll have to try to get the sound card working. One other little word of note to prove that this machine isn't all that powerful. The CPU itself does not have a CPU cooling fan. It just simply has a little throw over, uh, you know, just as a, basically as a heat sink. That's all it has, isn't there anything else? Okay, we did have that set the 16-bit color there for the last uh, demonstration. Uh, so to make things fair and square, uh, yeah, still set the 16 colors there. Yeah, 800 by 600. Yeah. Okay, we we'll just do a little DirectX 3D test here. This is another little test here you can do. Um, this piece of software, I can't even remember where I found that this stage. Um, I think it was something I was given for testing out machines, but I can't seem to get it anywhere else. You know. I'd love to get a more ver more modern version of it to be honest with you. It's nice and simple. The good thing about this as well is when it runs, first of all, you can, you can, it gives you sort of it's the same speeds. That's running a lot faster now on this car than it did on the last one. But again, if it's using a software mode, and um, there's a lot more, more range as well. If it's using a software mode, the CPU itself is doing all the work. In other words, it's trying to transit all those triangles, all those, all those bits and bobs, and get it up on the screen. Whereas what's happening now is, the actual video card is doing the translation. 
Now remember this is a 486 class motherboard. So we've improved a hell of a lot so far. Okay. So it's a 133 Cirrus Media GX. Basically it's a 133 sitting on a, a 486 motherboard. Okay, what have we got now? Okay, okay, okay. What are the tests can we do? We'll try to fly one. I'm not sure whether I showed you these tests running on the uh, Dell 486. But uh, it certainly wasn't that smooth in the Dell 486, even at this resolution. This resolution, by the way, in case you can't see it, is 312 by 274. Um, I'm recording all this in high definition, 10, 10, 1050p, so with a bit of luck, um, YouTube will, will translate it nicely. Um, let's go to DirectX Diagnostics quickly. Show you what we got in this baby. My final with the video card is, I'd say it's 4 megs, but we'll just verify. Now, we're back up to 16 megs of RAM, which the last time we weren't. Um, again, the reason for that was the video cards, as everywhere was sharing the RAM because the actual CPU is the video card, is the actual GPU. So we were sharing some system RAM, just like some more modern machines you've seen. You know, same way, the exact same thing. But this is the, this is basically the first machine to be doing that. So display there. So yeah, four megabytes. Okay, this is the chip. Okay, we do a DirectX. Uh, test here. This is going to be using software rendering. This is what the last one was using, it was just purely software rendering. To the gorgeous cube spinning away. Do -do -do -do. Okie dokie. Yep. I did, did you? That's using 3D. So again you see, see the speed difference there. Because the software rendering is using the actual processor, whereas the hardware rendering is using the off-board GPU. Yes I did. So now let's run Unreal again and see what happens. Um, video card wise, what would I recommend? <laughs> There's a question. Um, to be honest with you, I'm a big fan of ATI. That's been honest with you. Um, but that said, there are a few NVIDIA cards that I actually do like and I think they're damn good. And they make the ATIs look like mere toys. You know? But uh, one of the ones that uh, I really do like is the MX200-400 uh, series. I think that's what they were called. They were absolutely fan dabby dooby for playing a uh, Medal of Honor. I remember people come with me and wanted their machines to go faster and I was selling them those cards and they were for half nothing. And when I say for half nothing, they were about 110, 120 to 150 pounds. That's Irish punts uh, back in the day. But uh, they were absolute rockets for the time. And the ATI uh, video cards just couldn't hold the candles to them. And uh, the ATI video cards at the time were just junk compared to them. Uh, nowadays though, I, I generally use ATI video cards because I just basically got into them and I love the idea of using an ATI video card with a, a, an AMD processor or should I say an AMD video card with an AMD processor to make things fair of course we're letting this run at the same resolution 320 by 240 wouldn't be fair otherwise now let's see what happens is it any better? no really it might be playable though should we give it a go? We'll give it a go. We'll give it a lash. Give it a lash, Jack. Give it a lash, Jack. Let me see now. Okay. Let's do audio video. Options. Don't think there's anything in there to.
pen drive. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, you see the the the, the problem here. You see is it's using a software rendering because obviously with the ATI, and this is what I'm talking about, it doesn't have uh, PowerVR, SGL support, or 3DFX Glide support. But I'll tell you what we'll try in a minute then, is we have a PowerVR video card. <laughs> so we'll install that into the computer and we'll see what happens. The PowerVR video card basically takes the 3D instruction set and runs it separately. Because back in the day, what you used to do was you'd buy a 2D video card, and you'd run a, a 3D add-on card. The most popular uh, 3D add-on card was the uh, Voodoo range of cards. And again, if you're in the situation, the Voodoo stuff is, is, is pretty damn good. But again, as time moved on, they became integrated. Voodoo went bankrupt, NVIDIA bought them. And uh, ATI moved on, brought out the, Ra the, the, the Radian chipset. Uh, and again, they have moved on since then. So we've only got really two competitors in the market now, which is AMD slash what they used to be called ATI AT and um, NVIDIA. Uh, Matrix are still around, but they don't really make video cards for the common man. Um, okay. So that's that. What we'll do now is so we'll, we'll turn off the computer again. And we'll, we do have a power VR card. We'll go dig it out. And we will do this test again with the power VR video card. And we'll see what happens. How's that sound, huh? That sound good to you? Sounds blooming good to me, that's for sure. So again, still using the same machine. We're now going to go back to the internal built-in graphics, but we're going to add 3D support via the um, PowerVR chipset. The PowerVR chipset uh, also is somewhat unique, and I'll explain some of the PowerVR chipset features um, that I can think of. Um, in, a, in a couple of minutes. So uh, please stand by.